Here is uh, David Stokes from the Show Me Institute, a good friend of our shows, development director of the Show Me Institute. Good morning, David Stokes. Good morning, McGraw. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning. Uh, lots of talk about the new law that goes into effect here, and that is the new municipal court ticket rule that says that cities can, in the St. Louis County can only charge or only garner so much of their annual budget from tickets Good times are here again. <laughs> good. Well, I, we've needed this reform for a long time, so good times are, are here. This is incredibly important, and we've talked about it so much over the past, particularly the past year or so right. since Ferguson. But we talked about this issue before then as well, and it's so excellent to see it to see it coming through. And the, the law goes into effect within the next week here. Now, certain parts of the law sort of have a rolling implementation over the next couple of years. Right. But the new law is in effect. And my, my main point today is that people in the listening audience, you're going to hear a lot of talk. In the Post-Dispatch article uh, the other day, they hint that the Municipal League, the St. Louis County Municipal League or the Missouri Municipal League still might sue to block, to block the law. I hope that doesn't happen. And But what you're going to hear is city officials, opponents of the law, they're going to say over and over, it's unfair that St. Louis County is capped at 12.5% and cities in the rest of Missouri are capped at 20%. Right. That's not fair. That's not right. We need to potentially sue to change that. And my point today is anytime you hear somebody say that, it needs to be refuted. And so my point is there are dozens of potentially scores of examples in state law where St. Louis County is treated differently than the rest of the state huh. on all sorts of issues, sales taxes, property tax setting, education funding with the special school district. It's the only county with a special school district. Licensing of, of occupations like he, like plumbers and electricians done at the county level instead of the city level. I could go on and on. And if I did, it would probably get boring. What do you mean? It would get boring. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not going to. But people need to realize that the Missouri Municipal League, the St. Louis County Municipal League, is perfectly fine with all these times that it treats St. Louis County differently when they like it. This is <laughs> there's typical, no right? consistency here. When they say, "Oh, it's unfair," we might sue. No, you're going to find that as an excuse because you think cities should still be able to fund themselves through citations and ticket abuse, but they shouldn't. And if you you didn't complain from all these other dozens and dozens of examples, and I don't think they have any right to complain now. The bill was ultimately introduced or first introduced as no more than ten percent. And through some type of negotiation, right, as all legislation does out of nowhere, it just one day shows up as something different. And it, it rose to 12.5% in the county, as you mentioned, and then 20% in the, the rural areas. It goes to show you how addicted these towns are to this ticket revenue if in, the, in, in where they are, the only way they could get this approved is to raise the rural town's limit to 20%. Well, and I think Senator Schmidt, who's who sponsored the bill, right. if he were here, I think he'd say that it was he would look at it as a simple political necessity, right? That to get it passed and to get these important changes implemented. But I don't want to be too critical about the twenty percent for the rest of Missouri part. Let's remind that's lower than the old limit, and the fact that there's now enforcement provisions, right? Those apply in rural Missouri or the Kansas City area every bit as much in St. Louis. It moved in the right direction. It was a big step in the right direction. Yes. It just went a little farther in St. Louis County because, frankly, with some exceptions, the problem was more acute in St. Louis County. Well, and it's, I think... It's the, around the whole state. The problem exists statewide. Right, right. Well, and but but that's sort of my, my point, is that they're funding their government through tickets as opposed to using tickets as a deterrent for safe driving. And we've been doing it in... In St. Louis County, in Missouri yeah. cities, for a half a century. Right. And we've all, I, I speak as residents of the state, we're all to blame for it because we've all just, we've all accepted it. We've right. all just dealt well, with it. Because you feel like you've done something wrong and you're guilty and you, can't, you shouldn't complain. And even though, you know. Well, I, it's even worse than that. It's when I first moved to town, I, I got a ticket and I paid it. 
And then, like, somebody said to me, why did you pay your ticket? I was like, well, isn't that what you're supposed to do? You fight it. No, you hire a lawyer, and then you get it, you know, uh, kicked down to excessive parking tickets, and you right. pay, you know, and it was or like, oh, violation. I didn't know that's how you do that. Yeah. So, they I still mean. still get money, though. They but still, you still have a fine to pay. But it's, a, it's I mean, they're, they're just abusing their own citizens. Right, right. And they have been. And too many Missourians, you know, either knew a lawyer or could hire a lawyer for 50 well, it's not expensive to hire a lawyer for these tickets right but too many Missourians didn't realize maybe they didn't care i think most people didn't realize the particularly large amount of harm being done to our poor citizens who right. might work they might not work nine to five they work nights and all of a sudden they've got to take child care to run to that right to run to that court radley right. balco at the washington post people at the post dispatch have covered this really well you have covered it mcgraw yeah and that's how bad that situation is for the, the poor in our community has really been the impetus for these much needed changes. And they can't come fast enough. Yeah. If the Municipal League makes any attempt to, to fight it, I hope they lose badly. And I hope you're list- when your listeners out there here, if they hear a city official say it's unfair to, to treat us differently, I want them to come back and say, you know what? You are, you are full of it. You are fine with being treated separately for all sorts of other examples when the Municipal League liked it. Right. You don't get to say it's unfair now when your, when your gravy train is being but ended. I'm going to play devil's advocate. If you, it, I mean, I, I've gotten speeding tickets, and you know why? Because I was speeding. <laughs> you know, I mean, so if I'm poor, does that mean I can, I, I can get away with speeding? Or should it mean, how about I drive the speed limit? Well, everybody should drive the speed limit, but I think okay. it's the, the pullover data that the Attorney General collects. The problem is, if there was a consistency, if everybody drove eight miles over the limit, you're fine, and if you uh, get okay. pulled over at 10, if right. you're 10 right, miles over the that. limit, you get pulled over. It's, it's, it's if, a, if an African-American is driving ticket. seven miles over and get pulled over, and a white person is pulling seven miles over and isn't getting pulled over, that's the, well, that's and, that's the inherent right. unfairness. And I think the, the data that the right. Attorney General collects is, is demonstrate that that's a problem. What's more... It's the whole system that you can't afford your fine. Oh, because you couldn't. We don't allow kids, so you weren't able to come. Now you've got the warrant, and now you're being arrested a few weeks later over a, over. A, you didn't have a blinker on when you changed lanes. I always I love mean, that issue really, of warrant after your arrest. Uh, the, it's been a terribly abusive system for a long time. Real quickly, we still have you, David Stokes, from the Show Me Institute. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, unconstitutional red light camera ruling come down from the uh, Supreme Court. Uh, it, at the risk of getting too excited over <laughs> the Supreme Court ruling, yeah, I think it's I think it's excellent. I think yeah. red light cameras are nothing more than another way that cities that cities are. It's just for about the cash for the cities. Right. I give the cities no credit that they actually think it's about safety. They'll say that over and over. It's about money for municipalities. It's about abusing. Abusing a process to, to assume this is why the Supreme Court, one of the two reasons I believe they threw it out, that the defend it's the assumption of guilt on the behalf of the defendant, which is not how our system is supposed to work. Right. I think these tick red light cameras are terrible, and the faster they go away, the better. Uh, it'll be interesting because I've heard and seen where they these some of these cities have said, "Great, we will rework it and bring it back constitutionally." So they're going to change the way they administer it and bring it back because they're so money. addicted to, the, to this money. <laughs> to the money right. And it's time for the, the people in those cities to say, right. to start supporting people running for local office. These aren't, this isn't the governor. <laughs> this is just like your local city council person right. in your town of 20,000 saying, hey, we're going to fund ourselves through red light camera tickets. You can fight this as an ordinary city. You don't have to sit back and take this. You can, you can demand that your local officials fund government properly through some combination of u- of user fees, property taxes, sales taxes, and some others. You don't have to go out and fund yourself through red light cameras or, or St. Anne-like speeding ticket abuse. It, there are cities that make this work just fine without abusing the legal system to fund themselves. David Stokes, when can we read you? When can we see you? We've got a lot of good information on this subject up at showmeinstitute.org, and I hope all your listeners check it out, and they can follow me on Twitter at David C. Stokes. And we've got some events coming up. We've got a policy breakfast in early September. I think it's September 9th at our Central West End office, and we've got information up there at show me, on that up at showmeinstitute.org. Gotcha. Uh, by the way, we should mention that the Dow was down over a thousand. It's bounced back, and now it's only down about five, uh, five sixty, five seventy. So it has bounced back a little bit, but it was a uh, precipitous drop at the start. 
has bounced back a little bit, but still down uh, over 500, and we're keeping one eye on that throughout the morning. 846. David Stokes, have yourself a good week. Thanks for checking in. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, David. Traffic weather next.